Okay, here we are at the uh, tractor. We've got uh, part of the uh, air filtration system taken off, uh, coming from the uh, right-hand side uh, can uh, all the way to the uh, turbo. Let's take a look at the uh, heater box real quick. These heater boxes are held in pointing four different locations. I've already taken the bolts out, these bolts, and uh, here's the upside down uh, part number for a 2004 W900L. These uh, bolts are going into, uh, I guess, what are called nut certs. And uh, somebody's changed it over the years and they've tried to build uh, almost like a stud that goes in. Thankfully, I was able to take them out, coated them multiple times with some uh, PB blaster, and they came out uh, pretty easily. So I'm going to pop this off so you can see the inside real quick. Uh, here's the inside of the uh, heater box, the uh, the motor, uh, the leads, clamp system, looks like uh, it's got some uh, rubber on there to help uh, isolate, and it has uh, two baskets go right in there. I'm going to take all this apart and uh, clean it up appropriately, making sure to put the baskets in correctly. If you look down in there, inside the, uh, the fan tubes, you see a lot of dirt and debris, that's, uh, that's just nasty nasty stuff that's getting blown back into the cab I'm gonna clean all that up not real happy with uh, the way this is uh, insulated or sealed so I've got some uh, gasket material let's take a look up inside the actual heater box here real quick uh, the first coil is uh, for the air conditioner and then uh, behind it which is interesting I found out you've got this tray that you can kind of uh, slide out here and get to everything the rear coil for the heating system is uh, back there. Again, a lot of the gasket material has failed over the years. It's kind of dirty and nasty. So I'll disconnect all this, clean it all out, throw some paint on the rusty areas. But it is uh, interesting how it's engineered so that this tray can come out, obviously, for easy cleaning. Take a look back here. We've got a little bit of rust, quite a bit of rust going on the box here. I have to take all that out and clean it. Uh, once I bring a flashlight over, I'll show the inside. I should uh, seriously look at replacing uh, the whole box. It's just kind of kind of nasty, all the crap that builds up over the years in these things. And it looks like it's made out of just regular steel. So I'm going to have to clean this up quite a bit. What, uh, what can happen are these uh, nut certs that are in here. What I'm going to do is clean these up nice so we get have a good seal probably put some anti-seize on them so that if uh, I do reuse this box which I probably will financially right now just keep it running they'll be able to be uh, taken out easily in in the future but you can replace this entire box uh, it doesn't look like it's uh, too difficult But for now, I'm going to clean it all up. i got to run to Home Depot. They've got some nice product that you can put on these uh, coils for both your house and your uh, A-coil inside your house. Clean them up nice and neat. I did it on a Freightliner one time, and it revolutionized that truck overnight just by cleaning up some uh, basic uh, equipment. It uh, really, really helped out that truck right here. This is the uh, temperature probe, which I had already pulled out earlier. Once you get this uh, panel back in here, the temperature probe goes back down between the coils. Looks like you got a little bit of, a, I guess, a capacitor, maybe right there. Different wiring. Somebody's uh, made some nice uh, quick disconnects in the past to uh, hook the fan motor up. So I'll get all that uh, taken out and cleaned up, and uh, looks like we might be on our way. Got a little, little bit of cleaning to do and some paint. Taking off the uh, roadside can, some of the things that I noticed uh, as I start going through, and you probably do too, anytime you buy something used, you're like, what were they thinking? I'm looking at some of the wiring here. This is uh, for the uh, chicken lights, chick, chick, chicken lights right here. Yeah, well, okay, I guess it's not too bad. It's not rubbing, chafing or anything, but that's, that's not real good right there. Even though this is uh, 
fiberglass, it's probably okay. We we'll follow it up. Take a take a look at this. This is how the chicken chicken lights were wired in. Ah, it looks like something you might do at your home. What's interesting? Again, uh, I'm the third owner. Taking a look at this. Oh, what's this right here? Looks like an original spare key for this tractor. So that's uh, kind of interesting, right there. Nice tucked in and neat. Oh, that's nice. I've already got one key hidden on the tractor, so now I know where another one is. So anybody watching, if you want to drive away with a W900, you know where my spare key is. Now I'll change it. Here's the uh, fan motor and cover. I'm going to clean all this up, put some new gasket material in. Take this part, clean all this up, see if I need to replace that rubber. Motor works fine, just uh, want to clean it up and make it more efficient. There's the basket, you can see how it's uh, oriented, make sure it goes back in uh, correctly. But one of the reasons I'm going to clean this up, if you take a look here, this is, uh, this is just nasty, nasty build up over the years. I'm going to clean all this up. Any rusted areas, like here, I'll clean that up, throw some fresh paint on it, dress it up a little bit, try and make it seal a little bit better. I'll get to the uh, disassembly now. Uh, it took me a little bit to uh, figure out how to take these out. These uh, baskets just go in either side, the motor's in the middle. What I eventually did is I loosened up the motor so that it was uh, free in here. And then I just tilted the uh, whole uh, package up on one side. Used a small uh, punch right here and just uh, punched uh, the shaft off on one side because the basket you'll see doesn't doesn't go all the way through so I use this as a nice stop and I just flipped it over and punched out the other side uh, that way I did not damage the baskets at all each uh, basket is uh, held on with this uh, snap ring so now start uh, cleaning everything up these baskets are nasty luckily all the baskets uh, are uh, fins are intact but you can see the mess and all, again all of this is blowing around inside your cab the outside uh, filter for the W900 was uh, fairly clean, but it's been cleaned uh, since I started this project. Hopefully, I can uh, get rid of this nastiness. Nasty, nasty. Or to cleaning rather than just buying something to replace it because it's dirty. Here's the uh, cleaned up basket right here been cleaned uh, with simple green and it's soaked up for a long time in really good hot dishwater soap I wanted to put it in the dishwasher but I know at some point my wife would catch me so if you're like me you have probably put uh, your army gear boots gloves exterior wear such as uh, leather hats items like that and truck parts car parts in your dishwasher have been caught so I've learned my lesson so cleaned it up as best I could and blasted it with this cheap little soda blaster and here's the basket over here this is what they looked like before soda blasting nasty crud here's the baskets after they've been uh, cleaned up with the uh, little uh, Harbor Freight uh, Central Pneumatic uh, Abrasive Spot Blaster Gun. It's a piece of crap, but it gets the job done, especially on these light duty plastic parts. I shot this uh, intake cover, and you can see there's absolutely zero effect. The only thing it did is it uh, dulled uh, some of the paint, but I'll sand that and then uh, shoot it with some paint. Now these baskets are from uh, Bergstrom. On one side they say Bergstrom Manufacturing, then a part number of 589-540. But if you flip it over, on the other side, it says Revcor, I believe. You might be able to see it down in there, right in the middle. Revcor, and it has a part number of PD428340. 
that might be a subcontractor to Bergstrom, not sure. But I do remember, and I took plenty of pictures before I took them out, that the uh, name Bergstrom goes on the outside. They do have directional arrows, but you got to remember which way your uh, motor turns. So I'll be putting everything back uh, based upon pictures I took before I took everything apart. Well, here's everything all cleaned up, nice and neat, ready to go back in. It's definitely not original. This, uh, I mean, uh, looks uh, brand new, that's what I mean. This is original to the truck. Found a part number on it, but unfortunately, the simple green cleaner that I use uh, rinsed off the part number. It is a 12-volt system. Here's the uh, Bergstrom uh, baskets. Cleaned up uh, one of the shrouds. Threw some uh, paint on there. I'm trying some new paint. This is the uh, Rust-Oleum all-in-one paint and primer. I didn't spend much time on this uh, air intake uh, whatsoever. I just uh, shot it with the blaster a little bit. Nothing happened to the rust, so I just threw, threw some paint on it. Eventually, this entire box will have to be replaced because one of the things that I noticed, I'll show you here. Oh. Underneath the, uh, the part sticker that rinsed off, got some pretty solid rust here and if I want to push really hard it will go all the way through so within a year or two the entire box the lower box and this outside box will have to be replaced here's the Bergstrom uh, baskets right here cleaned up pretty nice with the uh, soda blaster they're fairly inexpensive I could have uh, ran to the uh, Kenworth shop ordered some as I say order because it seems like every time I go there I have to order stuff even a window crank I had to order. So we'll, uh, we'll get this together, see what it looks like. The uh, motor is dated uh, 2014, and I do have on the maintenance log from the previous uh, owner that it was uh, replaced, so I'm not going to replace this. It is uh, pretty good. Bearings are pretty solid in it. It goes back into uh, the housing. Uh, you can slip it in there. from the outside. Let me try it from the outside here. This makes a little bit more sense. Run it in through here. It does have a uh, rubber uh, wrap that goes around it to help uh, protect it. Get the wiring through here. As uh, I looked at the uh, entire basket, the wiring was to the uh, left from my original picture. So I'm going to go ahead and get the wrap on there. Start uh, putting this together a little bit. Here we are, got the motor in. Got the wrap on it. Got it uh, centered between the two ducts. The uh, wiring was on the left hand side. And got some uh, 11 millimeter head uh, nut and bolt locker in. Next, I'm gonna hook the, hook the wiring on, uh, review my pictures, and start putting the baskets on. Here's everything back together. Take a look inside the uh, fan basket. I'll rotate this up into a uh, better light. There's good orientation of how everything came apart. I'll flip it over to the other side. Got to put the uh, shrouds on yet. You can see how the uh, basket is oriented. One side uh, you'll be able to read uh, Bergstrom. I'll zoom back so if you're having to rebuild this you can, you can see how it's oriented. And then the other side, flip her over here, we'll have the side that says uh, RevCor on it. When uh, putting this back together, you want to make sure that the uh, the fan spins freely. I tested it with a 12 volt uh, battery. You got to put these uh, shrouds back on right there. You want to make sure there's plenty of clearance uh, between the uh, fan blades of the basket and these uh, little shrouds that work almost like a little plenum. So I'll get her all fixed up and uh, we'll run over to the truck. So this is uh, what the uh, intake looks like uh, coming off the tractor. This has already been sprayed down a couple times with uh, some simple green, um, but I have not washed this part yet. Take a look here. You can see all the, uh, the crud that builds up um, between the uh, aluminum tube and the rubber housings. And there's some kind of, I don't know what it is, just a buildup of material, probably bugs and dirt, that gets trapped between the uh, rubber hoses and the aluminum. 
So I'm going through cleaning all this off why I've got the uh, cover off to the um, heater box. So I'm going to be uh, using a wire brush on uh, some of that crud right there. And it wouldn't be that big a deal to um, replace these aluminum tubes. But uh, right now because the truck's in storage I don't want to put a lot of money into it. But I do want to uh, make sure everything is uh, operational. I believe those are 7 inch tubes. So I'll grab a tape measure here real quick. Run across there. No, it looks like 6 inch. 6 inch. So, you know, when you cut thin mall product like that, it's not that hard. But it is just a little bit of a pain. You can sometimes not get a straight cut. And then you got to clean up all the burrs. So I'm just going to reuse the, the tube. It's still uh, structurally sound. But I'm just going to clean it up. Here's one coming off of the, uh, be the curbside uh, outside can to the inside. You can see I've gone through. I've cleaned off all the uh, debris that has built up. I still uh, want to clean that up a little bit further. And then I um, scuffed the whole thing up with a green scratch pad. Did get a hair up my butt one night and start running some polish on it, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to go back through with a green or one of the uh, uh, orange-brown scuff pads and just kind of put a nice sheen on everything. That's just green uh, scratch pad right there. But I am going to clean all this up or where my thumb is. So today I'm just going to get into uh, cleaning the rest of these uh, rubber parts. And I'll show you what what it looks like after you clean it a couple times with simple green. And you got to use a brush to get into the nooks and crannies. So I think a lot of the uh, the rubber over the years, um, the dirt will become almost impregnated into the uh, rubber. And I've tried all different kinds of things to try and uh, clean these in the past, especially when uh, it's really hard when they're warm and on a vehicle just you can never seem to clean the radiator hoses or anything so uh when they're cold simple green and you can see now i've got to get in there with a toothbrush biggest thing is cleaning the inside you can see the inside there was a buildup of material still scraping some of that off look at that that's the inside of an air intake of a w900l with 1.3 million miles on it and you can tell it's never been cleaned before. So once I get them all done, I'll lay them out on the bench so everybody can see um, what the uh, air intake system looks like for a W900L. Here's what that uh, one piece looks like. Uh, it had uh, quite a build up of, uh, I guess, good term is plaque along where it's a little dark yet. What I did is I knocked it down with uh, a really uh, low speed uh, brass wire brush. Just something like this on the end of a drill real nice and slow and then uh, once I knocked it down I uh, then uh, cleaned it off then I uh, sanded it uh, real quick uh, with some 220 grit just to get the heavy stuff and then I went back along with uh, some uh, 1500 grit uh, just some nice uh, um, body shop uh, paper kind of smoothed it out a little bit uh, I'm not gonna polish this this trucks not gonna be show quality but uh, main intent was just to knock the dirt off, especially on the inside. Went through the inside with a green uh, uh, scratch pad, washed it twice with uh, hot soapy water, and I uh, think it's going to work out okay. Uh, next, I got to finish uh, working on these tubes, get down in the nooks and crannies, get all that nasty little dirt out of there. This one's not too bad. I've worked on it quite a bit. It's still got a little bit of dirt down in there. I'm going to go through the inside again with some hot soapy water. So uh, here's uh, almost everything cleaned up. I'll uh, show you how everything is. Uh, I've still got a couple parts on the truck, but here's how it sets up. Uh, this goes into the cold uh, intake of the uh, turbo, and then uh, it comes up along the side of the uh, engine. It comes up the uh, curb side of the engine, goes across the top of the engine. Uh, then it splits right here. This side goes over to the uh, the curbside exterior can, and right here, there's a longer tube that's mounted on the firewall of the uh, tractor that goes over to the uh, roadside 
or the left side of the uh, the tractor, the exterior cam. That's still on the truck. I got to run over to the truck and take that long tube off along with uh, the um, rubber uh, elbow. Got to take that off and clean it up. This is where everything looks uh, right now. So again, this is coming off of a tractor with uh, 1.3 million miles on it. Tried to get everything as clean as uh, possible. Used uh, simple green, uh, some green uh, Scotch Brite, and also some uh, 220 and 1500 uh, wet dry sandpaper, just to kind of scuff everything up. Again, not a not a show truck. Just trying to make it uh, look clean and uh, presentable, and uh, try and uh, minimize the amount of. Uh, dirt that's on the inside. Uh, the major focus was the inside of all these tubes, uh, cleaning them, getting rid of any uh, dirt and debris. So there's the uh, underhood uh, air intake system for a uh, C15 cat inside a 2004 W900L. Oh, one last thing, this is single turbo. Cat C15. It's the uh, MBN or the uh, Bridge series that came out between the uh, 6NZ and then the uh, Acer engines. Got about a half a bottle of the uh, coil cleaner sprayed on there. It goes on very nicely. It foams up uh, pretty good. I haven't seen anything start coming out the drain plug, so I may have to uh, clog drain plug. But you can see I can just get this way down in there. And as it foams up, you can see it's starting to pull out some of the dirt. I'm going to use some uh, water. And eventually I'll fire up the truck, hook up my air hose. Get some uh, crap. But the more, every time I spray it on, I get a little bit more dirt and debris like this coming off of those fins. You can see, spray it on there. And it'll just start pulling that crud out. I use almost the entire can, get on the end coils, get it all over the place. Looks like I got a little bit starting to seep out now. <clears throat> Looks like the box is leaking, so it is definitely time to replace this whole box. You can see how rusty it is down here. Got it leaking out there. Here's the drain plug. I haven't seen anything come out of that yet, so that could be a good indication that uh, that box needs some uh, TLC. I'm going to go get some, uh, brought a bunch of water with me. Unfortunately, I'm not at a shop. I'm at a storage unit, so I work with what I got. brought a bunch of water with me. We'll see what we can do here. Let this cook for a little bit longer, then I'll rinse it out. Uh, here we are. I've uh, done one rinse. And uh, you'll see when I put uh, some healthy water in there, clean these coils off, what happens. Looks like uh, we've got a couple leaks in our box. There is uh, water coming out of the drain hole. It is nasty. So I'm just going to keep on rinsing. Uh, but this pretty well confirms. Got to replace this entire box. And this truck's going to be in storage for at least another year and a half. Then uh, when I retire from my uh, second retirement full-time job, I'll uh, be going uh, on the road with it, so I'm going to keep cleaning. One of these handy dandy uh, airlines that are hooked up to your uh, brake glad hand. It's on the red side. The only thing I've done differently is I put a quick disconnect. They have this custom made blow gun. It was straight. Picked this up at Menards last year with a uh, brake line pipe bender. Put a nice 90 degree and an arc in it. Built this specifically for a freight liner to clean out the coil. And now, I'm just going to go in here and start cleaning this out. Ran the truck for just a little bit to build up some pressure. And I'll keep cleaning it out. All right, the uh, fan cover and the fan are getting ready to go back in. What I've done is I've, uh, right there, the temperature probe, put that back down between the coils, reconnected there. Remember the piece of tape, right hand side, left hand side. These are the leads to the fan. If I remember correctly, this uh, one with uh, two wires on it goes to the condenser. Went to the orange uh, wire and this black one went to the black. So now, I'll put the uh, fan shroud back on, button it up, 
and see if we can get some air movement. One of the things that I noticed, this box is just shot. And uh, I'm going to have to break down and I think replace the whole thing. Down here, it was leaking where this uh, rubber insulation material was put in. Just, just a bad deal all the way around. So, got a little bit of work ahead of me. What I got going on right now is I just ran in one bolt. You can see I uh, ran the bolt into the uh, nut cert that's in the inside of the box. Then I used it like a stud and tightened down the nut and washer. Might be a little bit easier to take out in the future. Not 100% sure. Doesn't really matter if the entire box needs to be replaced now that I found all the leaking holes. So I'm going to fire up the truck make sure I got the fan hooked up right. Alright, got the uh, truck fired up. Gonna check and make sure we've got the fan. I got the air turned on. It's uh, coming out. Let's see here. Uh, put it right up top. Temperature all the way cold. Air turned on. There you go. It's blowing, definitely blowing more than it was. I wouldn't say it's uh, original by any means. To take apart the uh, box on the inside, pan over here got the glove box off. This is the back side of the heater box right there. I have no idea how that cover comes out. That would be the ultimate. Uh, Freightliners, uh, you can pop those off, get to the coils. The coils are inside the cab so you can uh, do some cleaning. Best case scenario, if you knew what you were doing with uh, HVAC, you could evacuate all the Freon, then tear into it. So there's my uh, 12 shift. 12 inch uh, shifter extension right there. This is a 13 speed. Bought this truck. Uh, it had the full uh, chrome doodads, you might say. Boy, that's cooling off nice. Feels good in here now. Uh, all the uh, switches, everything was done up nice. I'm going to bump up the RPMs here a little bit. Get the engine to smooth out. There we go. Some reason brakes are off. Idle control is not working. Not sure what's going on there. And jakes aren't turned on. It's never not worked before. Well, anyway, that's for another day. Here's custom steering wheel put on. If you haven't got these uh, window shades. These are really nice to have. These are from uh, Heat Shield. Very nice. But uh, air's definitely moving, moving right now. I'm going to shut her down and uh, start putting the uh, intake system back on for the air filters. All buttoned up. Let's fire it up and see what it looks like. the air on high now fans on high got some air coming in feeling good we're gonna go outside take a look and see what we got turn all these lights off so accidentally left them on but the truck was sitting here for an hour while I was buttoning everything up
strong air. Strong air coming out of this thing. Gotta figure out how to take this box off. I'd like to clean that out too. It's been running uh, for about 10 minutes while I've been cleaning up my equipment. And uh, I'm here to tell you, it's chilly in here now. Blowing some good air. One of the leaks at the bottom of the box were two pieces of metal. Uh, but it didn't butt up, but they overlapped each other. I put one of those real simple wood clamps on that uh, a lot of the spring uh, wood clamps that a lot of people use on their uh, straps. And uh, that sealed up the box even a little bit better. Tightened her right up. So, within two years, this truck's going to be back on the road when I get ready to retire. Between now and then, I'm going to rip out the entire box, put a brand new box in. I'm going to do something a little bit different than just the sheet metal. I'm going to, before I put it in, I'm going to protect it with uh, some really good paint. Maybe even uh, have it uh, powder coated other than the cheap paint that's on that uh, sheet metal. That, uh, that thing should be built out of aluminum instead of uh, sheet metal just because it's exposed not only to the uh, engine compartment right there on the firewall, but it is also got a lot of water running through it. So, with that in mind, I may find somebody that's got a small shear and a press brake and uh, fab up my own aluminum, bo aluminum box versus having something out of, uh, looks like 14 or 16 gauge, just regular steel. Worst case scenario, it should be galvanized steel. That thing's designed like a brake pad to fail at some point, so I'm not sure what's going on. But there it is, 600 horsepower W900 with a uh, bridge motor, C15, 13 speed. Got the uh, heater box all cleaned up, blowing some good air now. Nice and chilly in here. Uh, I haven't turned on the air back in the sleeper yet, uh, but I'm sure it's working just as well. That fan's uh, newer, plus that coil doesn't uh, get nearly as dirty as uh, the one in uh, behind the uh, glove box there. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helps anybody out there with a W900. I think the T800s, uh, maybe some of the other uh, Kenworth uh, products have uh, similar boxes that you can take apart and clean out. Please uh, leave some comments if you know how to take apart the uh, box behind uh, the glove box of a W900, W900L. I'd sure appreciate it because I'm sure at some point I'm going to have to take that off to get the entire heater box replaced. Take care.